G'day guys, Ride here, your Chief Espresso Officer, and today I'm going to answer a question I get asked all the time, and it's a very difficult one to answer in a short video like this. However, bear with me, because we're going to go diving deep into what machine, well, specifically what espresso machine, do I buy in 2022? So, let's get into it. go on for hours and hours about different types of machines because there's literally thousands of different machine and manufacturers out there in today's and there's more propping up still. But I'm gonna go through the ones that I personally like and the ones that I've got my hands on before. And I'm gonna look at things not just about budget because obviously budget is important to a lot of people and some it may not be, it might be just whatever the best one is out there. But most people have a budget, a limit, a range or an idea of what they wanna spend. And aside from that, there's other important factors that don't necessarily come in under your budget. So is latte art, for instance, really important to you? Getting that silky milk? What about getting that perfect espresso? What about understanding what's going on? What about having complete control over everything? These are things that are, might be important to different people. And so I'm gonna try and cover them and maybe we have to make a matrices to understand what is important to you, budget and types of machine and availability, all of those sorts of things. So let's get into it. The very first one that I would like to recommend to people, if you're starting out in coffee, or you don't have a huge budget, it's coming up to when Audi starts selling their espresso machine. It's branded Sterling, but they sell it only once a year in Audi, usually around March and April. So I feel like they're gonna be coming out with that shortly. I'm not sure about in the US whether they have the same timeframes. They're definitely the Sterling Audi espresso machine is by far the best value money can get you for $300 Australian. I bought this machine a couple of years ago when the pandemic first started because I thought I wanted to give somebody advice on what low budget machine you could get if you just had to suddenly transition to working from home and you needed a machine that gave you decent espresso or some form of espresso because you couldn't get down to the cafe you weren't allowed to leave the home, whatever reason you might have. So I bought the Audi machine. I'm conflicted because normally $299 is not what I would say spend on a coffee machine. However, the Audi one, like Audi continuously does, surprised me. The machine is stainless steel, there's plastic parts, but the most of the parts are commercial grade. The portafilter is a 58 mil portafilter. That means that you can pretty much put any portafilter that's commercial into it. And yes, look, it comes with the caveat that it's not the best machine out there, of course. However, if you're looking at a machine under $1,000, then I would probably just start with the Audi machine if it's available and you can get your hands on it. Because for $299, you can get basically the same value that a machine that might cost you $800, $900, gives you. I've used this for two years now, on and off, depending on when my machine's broken, I just swap it out for this machine or I've lent it to other people who needed machines in emergency cases. Everyone has come back with, wow, this machine actually produces a decent quality espresso. It has great milk frother. It has the ability to extract enough coffee. I can grind my coffee fine enough and the pump pressure is high enough that it can extract a decent quality coffee. Maybe not the best if you're drinking espresso only without adding milk, then maybe this machine isn't where you want to start. However, if you're getting into coffee the first time or you just need something as a backup or it's a cheap one, then the Audi machine you cannot go past. Here's another thing that I would warn you about, about entry level machines. So ones that are normally from Kmart or supermarket models that are about 70 bucks, 80 bucks. Why would I stay away from those ones if you're getting into coffee for the first time or you just need a machine? Because they don't produce a quality coffee. In fact, I bought a couple during the pandemic to donate to some customers who might need some help just getting over that line and maybe they can't afford coffee every day but you need coffee every day. So I donated a couple out. So the feedback I got after I gave out these machines was that they ended up putting them aside because the coffee was so bad, even with my great quality coffee, the coffee that they produced was so bad 
The milk was just frothed up to the max. It's like hard, old school style milk frother. And they weren't producing a decent cup anyway. So they found that they were having to go out and buy a coffee anyway because it just didn't satisfy them. So I don't believe that you should go out and buy one of those really, really cheap machines. If you can't get the Audi one and you wanna, you can't wait and you wanna buy one right now, perhaps look at something that's like a Lelit. Lelit is a great, no fuss, nothing fancy, really solid machine. Like Anna is one that I think is a really low end one, like a, just a great quality machine, but nothing fancy. And they go right up to dual boilers, PIDs, all of that. But Leilid is a great brand, and I think you can find one for reasonably priced around $500. So a little bit more expensive than the Audi, but at least you don't have to wait. So what other machines are there that you can purchase under $1,000? Well, the Breville machine that I've always gone to is the dual boiler. However, for some reason, the price has gone up quite a bit, maybe since the start of the pandemic, maybe since the supply shortages, but it's now a thousand plus. There is other machines that they have released. One of them is the Breville Barista Pro, and the other one is the Breville Barista Express. Now they have the Bambinis and all the small ones as well, I tend to stay away from those. Same with the Sunbeam, the low end ones. They just don't last long enough and they don't produce a great quality coffee to begin with anyway. I just would move on to something more solid. The Breville Barista Pro is one that's 850 Australian, or around about that, and it has a built-in grinder. Now, I don't recommend a built-in grinder where you can avoid it because what happens with heat and coffee and moisture, rust, corrosion, it's not good. And you wanna have a grinder that is separate so that it's just heating up and there's no moisture getting in there. Whereas with your machine, moisture is gonna get in there. There's always gonna be some water ingress from somewhere or steam. The coffee combined with the heat and the moisture will just wreck that and sure enough, a lot of people have said that over time, the Breville Barista Pro or the Express, which is the one model before it, were not good enough to keep around long term. Don't buy the Breville Barista Express. That one I don't rate at all. I don't think the pump is really powerful enough. The milk steamer is not very good at all. There is the Pro, I think they're about the same price. Maybe the Pro is slightly more expensive now, but that is my coffee machine of choice for the Breville under $1,000. If you have to buy an espresso machine and you don't wanna spend more than about $800 and you need a grinder, because if you don't have a grinder, you definitely need to get one, especially for espresso coffee. If you don't have one, then yes, go ahead and buy the Breville Barista Pro. It's got a fantastic milk steamer. It will give you great quality coffee. The only problem is, is that it won't last very long and within five years, you'll be replacing that one. So if you're just starting out and you wanna get a decent quality coffee, then the Breville Barista Pro is under $1,000 and it will satisfy just that. Now, let's have a look at a brand that's under $1,000 that actually can give you a fantastic tasting coffee as long as you are an experienced barista or you know exactly what you're doing. This machine I have a little bit of a love affair with for many, many years because Ranchilio was the first machine I ever owned. Back in 2000, I bought a Z9, which was bright orange and looked more like something that fell from Star Lab than a coffee machine, but it produced the most beautiful coffee back in the 2000s. Best crema and just everyone that I showed it to fell in love with what it produced. And Ranchilio have now got a quite a following with their machine, their home barista machine called the Silvia, which they're now up to version six. So they have a huge amount of modifications, a modding community that shows you how to upgrade it, different parts, it's a fully serviceable machine. It'll cost you about 750 AUD or thereabouts, but this is not for beginners. So whilst the machine is fantastic, it's robust, you're looking at 15 plus years getting out of this machine. You can upgrade the elements, you can upgrade PID, you can add on a bunch of different mods. It will do your head in if you're starting out in coffee and you wanna get a good shot or steam some good milk. It literally requires an engineering certificate or about 15 years of barista experience to get that fantastic tasting coffee. But once you know what you're doing, this machine is unbeatable. So if you're already a barista and you know how to create a great coffee on your work machine and you understand about 
temperature surfing, and I can't really go into a lot about that, but temperature surfing is waiting until the temperature hits the right point to extract your coffee so it's not boiling your coffee and it's not cold. But the steam one still has a lot to be desired. And for those of you who want to get really good silky milk, buy the one that has the PID in it, maybe the dual boiler that's coming out, but not your base model Sylvia. However, if you just want to extract some great coffee and you don't mind getting in under the hood to fix things when things break, this machine will last you literally forever. And it's fantastic and I still have friends out there who love this machine and refuse to trade it in and get something new because they've worked it out. This machine becomes a part of their family. It's that good but you just gotta know how to use it. Hey, and if you like the content so far in this video, give me a thumbs up, because every little bit helps, and I wanna get out there and I wanna help as many people as I can. So if you think this is good, chances are somebody else thinks this is good too. So I'd like to share it with them, and you giving a thumbs up lets it get out there a little bit further. So, so far, we've got the basic Audi espresso machine, and if you don't have budget for anything else, I would just wait for it to come out. Then you've got your Sylvia by Ranchilio. If you know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing and you've got that $800 to $1,000 but you can't afford to go over and you need to get in a grinder as well, then the Breville Barista Pro is a decent alternative. However, if you can, save the 500 bucks and put it towards a proper grinder. If you have a $300 machine and a $500 grinder, you're actually gonna get a better result than if you have it flipped around or no grinder at all. So I would, where you can, always add $500 to your budget to buy a decent Barazza Seti grinder. Even if you don't have that much, the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, it's about 200 Australian, is a decent purchase to get you started and it's not built into the machine. It's basically the same one that comes in the machine. So if you have the budget, I would jump up to my next favorite machine. And I have been a big fan of this machine for a long time now, the Breville Dual Boiler. The Breville Dual Boiler is exactly as it says, a dual boiler machine. That means it has one boiler just dedicated to the extraction of your coffee and one boiler dedicated to the steam. That means you can do both extracting your coffee and steaming milk at exactly the same time, which some people find really useful because you don't want to always have to wait for your extraction and then start on a milk, especially if you're doing multiple milk or multiple coffees. So you might want to consider this machine as your purchase if you're upgrading or you've got about $1,500 to buy the grinder and the machine in one go. So the Breville Dual Boiler has a really fantastic steam one. It's only downside is that's a little bit slow, but you get the silkiest milk, and that, if you want to get into latte art, is the perfect machine to go down that road. It also allows you to set the temperature for the machine, for the extraction, so you can raise it up a little bit if it's a lighter coffee, and you can lower it if it's a more medium roast coffee. There's pre-infusion, which I definitely recommend you turn off unless you know what you're doing. And it heats up in about a minute's time, which is fantastic for getting your coffees out really quickly in the morning. But the downside I have for this machine is that it breaks fairly easily. And I've had about four of them and they have only lasted between three, maximum five years. And it seems to be a simple thing going wrong right around the boiler, a seal that leaks, and then it shorts. And if you have the skills, you can actually take it apart and replace it because most of the time it's like a $30 plastic part that you can replace. But the problem is, is the time and labor costs of getting inside it to open it up, to fit the new part, put it all back together, it takes a long time, like six or seven hours to do it. And so if you send it off to get repaired, it's gonna cost you pretty much close to what the machine is. And then you might as well put that towards a new machine. For most people, this is gonna be the best purchase. In fact, this is my number one recommendation is the Breville Dual Boiler because you just can't go wrong with it in any way, shape or form. And I've recommended this to so many people just with the caveat of this is not a long-term machine. If you want something that lasts long, that is a little bit good looking, that's not super expensive, there's the Gagia Classic Pro. Yes, it's not the sexiest machine, but this is a workhorse. It will last you forever 
pretty much the same as the Ranchilio Silvia. It has most of the same functions. You just need to understand a little bit about making coffee in order to use it to get the best out of it. However, this is a machine that you can service parts. It all is commercial grade, so you can just use it on any standard equipment. You can buy all the accessories without having to worry whether they fit, mostly, which is handy. And unlike the Breville Pro, which has a 54 mil basket, means you have to get everything custom made for the Breville Pro. The Gaggia Classic is just set fantastic as that stock standard, really robust machine around that price. Now once you go above 1000, you start getting a lot of different machines there and they all start to look really lovely as well. So there's brands like Profitech, ECM, they all have machines and ECM is exactly just the same as Profitech, it's just rebadged. They all have very similar design styles, they have manual pre-infusion, they have a heat exchange sometimes which means that you can do milk and extract your coffee at the same time, which is handy. So just look for that word heat exchange. They use the E61 group head, so they all have commercial fittings. And they all pretty much fall into the same category here. Just depending on what's important to you, look at things like, does it have a PID, which is a temperature stabilizer, which allows the machine to sit pretty much at the same one, so you don't, unlike the Ranchilio, have the problem where it gets too hot and you can risk burning your coffee. So a lot of these machines that are not as well known are usually cheaper because they're trying to get out there and get a bit of market share, but they're great quality machines. And most of these machines that go from $1,900 up to $3,000, are gonna last you 15 plus years, and some of them will last you 30 years. When you get to about $3,000, you start getting into my favorite brand, Rocket. And Rocket make a whole range of different coffee machines based on your budget and what your needs are. So I would jump onto their site and have a look at them. The basic one being the Giotto, and that gives you the ability to create a really nice espresso at home with manual pre-infusion, full CE61 head, steam both milk and extract coffee at the same time, all commercial parts. Really, this is a machine that will last you 30 years. You might have to service it every couple of years and that might cost you $600, but this machine, when you're spending $3,000 plus on it, you know you're getting high quality. And yes, they can jump up pretty quickly when you start adding things like dual boilers because those rockets, they like to make their machines look really lovely and all the parts and the way they make it is super beautiful. So they do ask a nice price for them, but you will never be sorry if you purchase one of these because they will become a family feature, probably an heirloom for years to come. So who buys the rocket machines? Well, I wouldn't say it's your first purchase unless you have the budget, of course. If it's something that you're looking at upgrading to, rocket is perfect for that because you've got a little bit of experience on the base machines. You want something that's gonna last you this time. You want something that's gonna be a bit more of a feature. Maybe you can afford to buy a nice grinder that goes with it. And if you're looking at something, I would say, look at Kwama, that's a fantastic machine. Kwama E50s and things like that, they have machines that are about six to $700, which are beautiful machines that go perfectly next to something like the Rocket. So that's who buys these machines. When we start talking about jumping up to the next level, we're looking at things that I have just purchased myself, the Decent Espresso Machine. These start at 5,000 and go up to about 8,000, but these are machines not for people who are just starting in coffee. Unless you really want to go spend hours and hours and hours trying to get that perfect coffee, because the Decent Espresso machine, unlike the name, actually creates the most exquisite tasting coffee with the data that goes behind it. So you can see in graph form as it's pouring, the coffee, whether you're getting the flow right, whether the pressure's right, whether the actual weight out is right, it tracks everything, even the temperature. So you can have custom made coffee at the click of a button and always have the ability to change it, tweak it, make it better every single time. I just purchased this machine after years and years of looking at it, but not really wanting to take the plunge because the new brand Decent hasn't been around for longer than seven years. 
so they don't have a huge well-known reputation for long-lasting devices however everything that's gone into this machine is commercial grade the quality has not been overlooked and I wouldn't be surprised if this machine lasts as long as the other machines, 15 plus years. And if I get 15 plus years out of it, I'm a very happy person because what I also get to do is analyze every single coffee that I ever make. So when I'm making coffee, I come from the artistic way. So I really look at how it looks, how it smells, what it sounds like when it's extracting, the steam, everything I come at it from an artistic and obviously how it tastes. But with this machine, it allows me to go deep in underneath the hood to see exactly what's going on so that when I taste it, I go, that is fantastic, why? And I can look at the machine and go, perfect. That's what I need to do in my next shot to get that same result. If you're a geeky nerd like me and you want to dive deep into why coffee might taste like that and experiment and do all sorts of different coffees, you can replicate other machines even, lever machines, big commercial machines, different types of pour overs. There's a huge community behind it. They all are vocal and they're adding in new recipes all the time. It's designed by Scott Rayo, who's one of the godfathers of coffee and he had a hand in it making and designing this machine and I just can't go past saying that this machine should be called Exquisite Espresso Machine because decent doesn't do it justice enough. However, there was a problem that I just found out literally filming this video. The ceramic basin that you put the water into to hold it, the reservoir, dropped and because it's ceramic, it shattered. Luckily enough, I had a plastic container the right size so I could fill it up and you can actually put that in underneath and still make a coffee otherwise I'd be a very very sad and angry person not having my morning coffee so there are some downsides to this machine and I think having a ceramic reservoir and a ceramic drip tray is a little bit dangerous and I don't know why they didn't go with a powder coated stainless steel they did say it's because it's health and food safety. I know that you can manufacture machine parts in other ways. I would have been much happier had I just dented my stainless steel reservoir than destroying my entire ceramic one and now having to pay $60 to order a new one. Those are the few downsides to this machine, but honestly, this machine is absolutely fantastic and I wouldn't even bother looking at other machines above that range now after having used this for a couple of months because I feel like this machine has it all and the other machines may have some of it but doesn't give you that feedback that you need in order to improve. Now I wouldn't be doing you justice if I stopped there because Lamazoco have some fantastic home machines and whilst they don't give you the feedback that the decent machine does they are still top quality machines and I've been using Lamazoco for a long time but I've never had one for my home and I always did have my eye on the GS3 however at 11,000 Australian I just thought it's a little bit outside of my budget the linear mini is another fantastic machine for about seven and a half thousand Australian but again if you're going to buy one of these machines, you're paying for the name. They are very robust, really sturdy, and are excellent quality, except that they don't give you any of the feedback. Even the Seneso machine that I have here in the cafe doesn't give me any feedback. It's very good at being able to adjust and manipulate the shots to make it perfect for what coffee you have running through and the age of the coffee, but you don't get any of that feedback about what's actually going on under the hood like you do with the decent. So when you're spending this amount of money, 5,000 plus on a coffee machine, you might want to consider going straight to the decent, unless you just want something that no one else has and you can send it down to Spreck Designs down in Melbourne and get them to do a custom cover for your particular home machine because they do some fantastic looking covers for all types of different machines and it's worth the investment if you're spending that much anyway. Once you get to Lamazoco GS3, there's a couple more machines at that 
11 plus thousand dollars that are worth considering. Seneso, obviously the MVP Hydra single group is a fantastic machine. I can vouch for it because I have one here. I've been using it for a couple of years and it is mint. After that, there's also Slayer, which has a really good home machine. There is one machine that if budget wasn't an issue and I was renovating my kitchen and I just wanted to have one built into the kitchen countertop, I would look at the Mod Bar. It's designed with using the LM technology, Slamazoko te technology. It sits under the counter with just the spout coming through the top. Looks like I'm serving beer at a bar. If I wanted a machine like this and I had the budget, this would be my go-to because I just love the openness, the feel of it, everything about it. And I just can't wait for one day in the future to have a kitchen with a couple of these little mod bars built in underneath. So that's it for my fairly brief overview of what coffee machine to buy. And it really does come down to a couple of things for you guys, which I'll try and put into this matrices here. If your budget is low and you don't have skills, grab the Audi machine. That's by far the number one machine. Go out and buy that now and spend some of your other money on a grinder and get a decent grinder as well. Make sure it's a burr grinder. Now, if you do have skills, like you're a barista already or you've been making coffee at home for a while, espresso coffee, then I would look at the Ranchilio Silvia. For a thousand plus dollars, you're going to get a magical machine that you can manipulate, that you can be part of a modding community and you can get the best tasting espresso at home. But if you don't have the skills and you have that same budget, then I would look at the Breville Dual Boiler. And the Breville Dual Boiler will give you a perfect coffee, it's so easy, you don't even have to think about it, but you still have full control if you want, and the milk is to die for. Now, let's say you don't have the budget to buy that Breville Dual Boiler and a coffee grinder, and you need to have a machine with a built-in grinder, then go the Breville Barista Pro, because it has the coffee grinder in there, it's under $1,000, and you can still make cafe quality coffee very, very easily. Next on the matrix is that middle range machines above $1,000 for ones that are going to last a long time. So Breville don't last if you want something to last, but you need something that's easy to manipulate and you want something to look really beautiful, then you wanna look at something like a Profitech or an ECM, those machines at that $1,500 to $1,900 are great machines to have. Above that, I just go straight to Giotto, the Rocket Giotto. It's three and a half plus thousand, but you get a fantastic looking coffee machine, super easy to use, fully manual, great tasting espresso, and it lasts you forever. Going above that, you go to my golden all-time favorite, my current coffee machine, the Decent Espresso Machine. Fantastic, I've already gone into it a little bit before. This is the machine to aspire to, but just remember, you will lose hours and hours and hours of reading researching, analyzing, and making coffee. So it's really hard to just make a coffee early in the morning and not try and refine it, tweak it, get that little bit extra out of it, and before you know it, an hour's gone, and you're late for work. That's my top one. After that, you've got your Lamazoko Linear Mini at 7,000 plus, you've got your GS3 at 10,000 plus, you've got your Slayer, and you've got your Seneso MVP Hydra at 13,000 plus. And then very final one up the very top is the mod bar. So that's it from me. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up. And if you really like it, subscribe, and add a comment down below. Tell me what you think of these videos and if you agree with me on the machines. If you have suggestions for other machines out there, please put them in the comments below because I don't know every machine that's out there and I'm finding out about them all the time. So if you help me, introduce them to me, I can look them up later on and review them too. Share that with the world. I'm Ryde, Chief Espresso Officer. Enjoy your brew.